How different are the Textus Receptus and the critical text? Are the King James Version and the ESV completely different Bibles? Effectively, all defenders of exclusive use of the King James Version insist that the Greek New Testament edition underlying the King James Version, that is the Textus Receptus, is substantially different from the critical text of the Greek New Testament. I want to give a number of direct quotes here to show that I'm representing them accurately. I've heard major King James defenders call the two Greek texts radically different, completely different. I've seen their followers online speak of the two texts as polar opposites. And I've seen them say that modern Bible translations based on the critical text preach another gospel. Just saw this recently. The Trinitarian Bible Society has said that modern Bibles follow corrupted manuscripts that make drastic alterations to the text of the New Testament. Another leading King James defender who is the president of a seminary said that modern text critical methods have made fundamental alterations to the text of the New Testament. I've seen the differences between the texts called COLOSSAL in all caps in my YouTube comments. Many King James defenders have asserted that God and Satan each have their own line of Bibles going down through history. This is sometimes called the Antiochene stream, which is good, and the Alexandrian stream, which is bad. I believe that every one of these statements is false. But I want to ask, if these statements were all true, how different would you expect the two texts to be? What level of difference between them would justify such statements? Let's try to break these questions down into two options, quantity and quality. I'll talk briefly about this distinction and then spend some more time on each option. A drastic difference in quantity would mean that the critical text is much shorter or much longer than the Textus Receptus, right? Or it would simply mean that the two texts are similar in length and shape, but that so many differences exist between them, quantity, that they can't even really be called the same document. A drastic difference in quality might mean that the two texts are the same in all respects, except for a small number of very significant changes. Changes that manage, let's say, to teach that Christ was not God, that he was not born of a virgin, that his blood does not atone for our sins, that the Trinity is a farce, etc., etc. I think King James defenders intend to communicate that the TR and the critical text are drastically different in both quantity and quality. So let's now talk in more detail about each option. If the two texts were radically, completely different in quantity, I would expect one to be a lot longer or shorter than the other. But that simply is not the case. The critical text is almost exactly 2% shorter than the main Textus Receptus edition. By the way, my numbers are derived from the SBL, GNT, and Scrivener, for those who know the lingo. One of the texts includes 834,301 characters, and the other 817,908 characters. But perhaps the two texts are drastically, completely, and radically different in quantity in another way. Perhaps there are simply so many differences between the two texts that, though you can tell they once started out as the same document and they've ended up around the same word count, you know, there, and there are still 27 books with the same names, for example, Matthew, Mark, Luke, etc. Maybe they are now wholly different books. But I and a team of volunteers have gone through the entire New Testament, translating the differences between them into English and highlighting them for English readers. Look, just look for yourself as I scroll through about five chapters of the New Testament. Do these chapters look drastically different to you? You can see the differences highlighted in red on one side and pink on the other. I selected these chapters at random. Do they look completely different? Here's just a few more. Do they look radically different? Colossally different? Fundamentally different? I really just don't think so. Remember, we'll get to differences in quality next, but just judging by quantity, I don't see how anyone could fairly say that the two texts are vastly, fundamentally, completely different. And I, of course, encourage you to look at more than just five chapters. Look at all 260. Do it. I made it possible for you to do it in English. Not only do I have nothing to hide here, but I've put everything out there for public view. I've put every translatable difference between the two texts into English and made it easy to see them. 
I'll never forget doing the first few chapters on my own and looking at the results on my test site for the KJV Parallel Bible. What jumped off the web page at me were the overwhelming similarity of the texts, not the overwhelming difference. Verse after verse is exactly the same. At least one whole chapter, 2 Timothy 3 as it happens, is exactly the same in both columns. And not a few chapters are very nearly the same, just one or two differences. Often when comparing two things, the number of differences depends on how you count. But at the KJV Parallel Bible site, if you count the number of characters that are marked off as different between the two texts, you get a number of about 6%. Christians believe that the Bible is God's word. So differences of this size between texts of the Bible should concern us, but so should overheated and divisive rhetoric. Judging only by quantity, it is decidedly not the case that the Textus Receptus and the critical text are radically, completely, or drastically different. Perhaps, then, the texts are radically, completely, and drastically different in quality. How would one judge such a thing? qualitative differences between the two texts. I can think of a few ways to measure addition, change, and subtraction. Of course, there are combinations of these three options as well, but let's treat them separately, if only because treating them together would be impossibly complex. If the critical text were radically, completely, and drastically different by addition, you could imagine, for example, that some of the accretions that have covered up the gospel in the Roman Catholic Church were found in the critical text. Perhaps the slim teachings of the New Testament about Mary are still there, but there are added passages discussing Mary's uh, immaculate conception and bodily assumption into heaven. Or perhaps the teachings about salvation by grace are still there, but so are numerous added passages about a treasury of merit and the purchase of indulgences. Or perhaps the teachings about church leaders' proper character qualities are still there, but there's an additional set of passages praising clerical celibacy as the true ideal. It would take a lot of added passages, I'd say, to turn the critical text into a completely different text. But none of these additions, and nothing like these additions, can be found in the critical text of the Greek New Testament. As I've already said, the critical text is actually 2% shorter than the Textus Receptus. No one I know of, even among KJV defenders, is saying that the critical text is changing the New Testament by adding to it. So we can set this option aside. So perhaps, as I mentioned earlier, the bare number of differences between the two texts is not large, but the critical text changes the Textus Receptus by sneaking in a bunch of single word alterations that radically, completely, and drastically change the teaching of the New Testament. Maybe Romans 6.23 in the critical text says, the wages of sin is not death. Maybe in Ephesians 2, the critical text says, For by works you have been saved. Maybe John 14, 6 in the critical text says, I am one way, one truth, and one life. Many people come to the Father through me. Maybe, uh, and just please forgive me for this shocking example, but I really feel it's necessary in order to drive home the point of what's not happening. Maybe Matthew 1, 23 in the critical text says, Behold, the slut shall conceive and bear a son. Is this what we find when we open the pages of the critical text of the Greek New Testament? No, not remotely. The wages of sin is still death in the critical text. It's still by grace that we've been saved. Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father. And Mary was a virgin when she was found to have conceived in the critical text. All the doctrines of the Christian faith are found in the critical text, usually in precisely the same words. In fact, I picked those four examples I just used off the top of my head. Then I went and checked them all. And in each case, each of the four cases, the critical text was precisely the same as the Textus Receptus. Not a single textual variant was to be found in those four verses. It would take a ton of these kinds of changes to the Textus Receptus to produce what anyone could fairly call a completely different text. The differences between the two texts are almost always, instead, incredibly minor to the point of meaningless. And to try to start to show this, I'm going to pick 10 New Testament verses at random using a little numbers spreadsheet I built for this purpose. To get a truly fair picture of how similar the two texts are, 
I think you'd have to look at far more examples than 10, but this video can't last that long. <laughs> That's the work that you're going to have to do on your own. So here are 10 verses of the New Testament. First, the TR says in Luke 20, 34, and Jesus answering said unto them, the critical text does not have the answering. It's just, and Jesus said unto them. I would not call these completely different. Second example, Revelation 3.20, the stand at the door and knock verse. This is a verse I selected at random. The two texts are actually identical here. I won't say more. Third, Luke 6.17 is the next random verse selected. The TR speaks in this one of the company of his disciples, while the critical text speaks of the great company of his disciples. If you are inclined to be conspiratorial and argue that the critical text was trying to monkey with the truth here, I literally can't even imagine what the motivation or purpose could be. I, if anything, I could argue, if I were a conspiracy theorist, that the TR was trying to diminish Jesus' following, not calling it great, thereby diminishing his honor. But that's totally foolish. On any fair, non-conspiratorial reading, the critical text and the TR are saying exactly the same thing here in slightly different words. I would not call these verses completely different. Fourth, the next random passage is Matthew 6, 5. The two texts are identical here, so there's nothing more for me to say. Fifth, the next random passage is Hebrews 8, 4. The TR says in this verse, For if he were on earth, that's Jesus, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. The critical text says, therefore, not for, if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are those that offer gifts according to the law. There's no difference in meaning in a context like this one between for and therefore. And the demonstrative pronoun those in the critical text simply has to be referring to priests. That kind of variant is actually very common. The Texas Receptus will frequently name instead of use a, a, a subject rather than use a pronoun, but they're clearly referring to the same persons. I would not call these verses completely different. Sixth, next random passage, 1 Peter 1.17. The two texts are also identical here, nothing more to say. Seventh, next random passage is Luke 11.51. The two texts are perfectly identical here. Nothing more to say. Eight. Next random passage is Romans 16, 6. The Textus Receptus in this verse has Paul saying, Greet Mary who bestowed much labor on us. The critical text has Paul saying, Greet Mary who bestowed much labor on you. If you will perform this same exercise that I'm doing, you know, forcing yourself to look at example after example after example in the KJV Parallel Bible, you'll find that this particular kind of variant is very frequent between the TR and the critical text. Hamon and humon are the Greek words. They kind of sounded alike, apparently, in certain versions of Greek. So maybe scribes misheard them as a lector was reading them aloud. They're often mixed up. But whether or not Paul was including himself among the group of people upon whom Mary bestowed much labor, I don't see how that matters. And unless God tells us which one is right, I'm happy to call both of them inerrant. I would not call these verses completely different. <laughs> number nine. I thought this was so amazing. The next random passage selected by my number spreadsheet was 1 Corinthians 14, 9. That is so funny because this is perhaps the classic passage here on my channel. It's one of the verses that teach us that if you want to edify people, you have to use words they can understand. Edification requires intelligibility. This message is the overriding burden of this channel. I talk about textual criticism as I am doing in this video reluctantly because I find I have to clear away bad ideas so that people can hear the message of 1 Corinthians 14.9 as applied to the King James Version, which uses unintelligible words too frequently because they're archaic. Just to be above board, you can look here at a screenshot of my spreadsheet. I assigned a random number to every verse in the New Testament, then I sorted the whole list according to the random number column. Then I took the top 10 on the list, and I'm going through them here, and this was one. I just think this is such a wow. And the two texts are identical here, another wow, 10th. Last random passage on my list of 10 is Hebrews 7, 6, and the two texts are identical here as well. If you will continue this exercise with a fair mind, I think you will see that even when the TR and the critical text differ, their differences are almost never substantive. 
The two big exceptions are the longer ending of Mark and the story of the woman caught in adultery. But if the brackets around those passages in the critical text make the critical text a completely different text, then English has broken because I apparently don't know what completely different means. <laughs> to me, saying that the TR and the critical text are completely different is like looking at two identical twins and saying they're not identical twins at all because one of them has a freckle on her left elbow that the other one doesn't have. <laughs> so, if you've lost the thread here, we're talking about differences in quality that might make the critical text radically different from the Textus Receptus. I have argued that there are not additions and changes that justify calling it colossally, fundamentally, radically, drastically different from the TR. But how about subtractions? Perhaps key sentences are omitted, and to such a degree that one must call the critical text completely different. This really is the most common charge levied by King James defenders against the critical text. They constantly claim that modern versions undermine the deity of Christ and the necessity of blood atonement by removing or omitting key verses. This is what the memes on Facebook say. But I'd like to question their assessment. For one thing, since when does omission equal denial? I actually do not believe that the critical text has omitted any verses from Scripture. But I could respect those who do. I really could if they would just stop and notice that I still believe all of the precious biblical doctrines that they say are omitted from my Bible. That alone, I think, would turn our disagreement over New Testament textual criticism into a reasoned discussion of Christian liberty among brothers, instead of what it all too often is. An outrage derby in which I am told that I am using a satanic Bible that preaches another gospel. I have happy Christian fellowship with many brothers who prefer the Textus Receptus. I really do, but it's rather hard to maintain any kind of Christian unity with someone who says, I have joined Satan's team. And if Satan created the critical text, he did a terrible, terrible job. <laughs> Let's take a variant in Matthew 1 that I have seen many King James defenders point to, and let's give it a maximally suspicious reading. Indeed, the Textus Receptus calls Jesus Mary's firstborn son, while the critical text calls him only a son. I've seen King James defenders point to this variant as evidence that the satanic critical text denies the virgin birth. See, they say, this leaves open the possibility that she had already had children, and of course she was, you know, therefore not a virgin. But it was my good pastor, Mark Minnick, who said to me numerous times in sermons that this passage gives numerous other testimonies to the virgin birth, and they're all in the critical text, in exactly the same wording that's used in the TR. I will read the passage to you, and I will emphasize those testimonies. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. That's the second testimony. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly, which he wouldn't do if he knew he'd already had sex with her. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. If Satan is responsible for the textual variant in Matthew 1.25, he is a very, very bad corrupter of the New Testament and of Christian doctrine. The progenitor of the TR himself, Erasmus of Rotterdam, knew very well about the variations in the manuscript tradition of the Greek New Testament. He did not let this face him the way TR defenders today are commonly faced. He said this, Already in his day, Origen complained about puzzling variations in the Gospels. If you inspect the old manuscript codices, that it means books, that were used in those times in public worship, this is what we call lectionaries today, collections of scripture readings, you will scarcely find two that agree with each other. Certainly it is clear that Augustine used manuscripts that were not free from faults. And yet all down through the centuries, the authority of Scripture has stood firm. If textual variation in the manuscripts completely deprives the Scriptures of their reliability, then remember, there is manuscript variation in the Hebrew, in the Greek, and in the Latin. 
I wish TR defenders would use Erasmus's viewpoint here and not just his text. If the critical text is radically and completely different from the text of Receptus, and if it's omitting Christ's deity, the blood atonement, the virgin birth, and other key Christian doctrines, if indeed the critical text is Satan's Bible, then why do countless conservative Christians use the critical text with God's apparent blessing, including me? And why do we all still believe in Christ's deity, the Trinity, the blood atonement, the virgin birth, and practically every other doctrine believed in by KJV defenders, who themselves don't agree about everything, of course? Are we such bad Bible readers that we don't realize we're reading a completely different Bible than the King James Version that so many of us, like me, grew up with? No. The critical text is hardly different at all in quantity from the TR, and more importantly, it's hardly different in quality. It neither adds false doctrines to the New Testament, nor changes nor subtracts true doctrines from the New Testament. The critical text and the TR are not radically different, completely different, colossally different, fundamentally different. They are the same text, just with a number of mostly minor differences. Before I made the KJV Parallel Bible website, Christians who could not read Greek were dependent on those who could read Greek to tell them how different the TR was from the critical text. It behooved them, and it still does, to be very careful how they represent the differences between those two texts, because actual Christians are using actual translations based on the critical text. And it's divisive to tell them that their Bibles are radically different when it is not true. So Dean Bergen was wrong to characterize the differences between the TR and the major five major unshul manuscripts relied on heavily by the critical text in the revision revised. He said, imagine it gravely proposed by the aid of four such conflicting documents, he means these unshul manuscripts, to re-edit Hamlet. Why, some of the poet's most familiar lines would cease to be recognizable. For example, A, he's talking about Alexandrinus here, would say, Toby or not Toby, that is the question. B, that's Vaticanus, would be saying, tob or not, is the question. Aleph, that's Sinaiticus, would be saying, to be a tub or not to be a tub, the question is that. C, which is Ephraimi Rescriptus, would be saying, the question is, to beat or not to beat Toby. And D, this is the famous Western text, the singular codex, he calls it. The only question is this, to beat that Toby or to be a tub. Now, this is all tongue-in-cheek, and it's actually quite witty, you gotta hand it to Bergen. But it leads people who can't read Greek to vastly overestimate the difference between the TR and the critical text, and even among these five anshuls. So why do intelligent KJV defenders claim that the two texts are radically different when they are not? I do not believe they are lying. I really don't. I believe that their viewpoint commits them to a hidden premise that makes small differences look huge to them. King James defender Dr. Thomas Strauss said this, If the pure originals are not preserved purely, then how can they be preserved at all? Is one to understand that God has promised to preserve his pure originals impurely? In other words, if even one jot or tittle of the Greek New Testament is out of place, we can't really be sure about anything that God has said in the New Testament. This, to me, is a plausible reading of Matthew 5.18. Jesus comment that not a jot or a tittle will pass from the law until all is fulfilled. And it's the impulse that makes small differences between the TR and the critical text seem colossal in all caps. Anything less than absolute perfection would have to be corruption in this view. A miss is as good as a mile in this view. But I don't believe that Jesus was promising us a line of perfect handwritten copies of the Greek New Testament in that verse, or perfect printed editions of the Greek New Testament. And one reason I don't comes from a fact that I've chosen not to mention so far in this video, but it's appropriate to mention now. A fact that is super, super important, but also that would have made the video too complex if I'd brought it up sooner. Here's the simple fact. The edition of the TR that I used in all the comparisons in this video is only one of many dozens of editions of the Textus Receptus, and they themselves have many differences among them. In fact, the differences between TR editions are all of the same quality of the differences between the TRs and the critical texts, minus the two passages that I mentioned. Mark 16, 9-20, that's the longer ending of Mark, and John seven fifty three to 8-11, 
which is the story of the woman caught in adultery. And if I judge differences among TR editions not by quality but by quantity, there are certainly hundreds and maybe thousands of different differences among TR editions themselves. I don't know for sure because no one has actually counted though friends of mine are hoping to do so, and we have started in various passages. I've tried for years to figure out how KJV defenders know that the variants in the critical text that are not in the TR are satanic corruptions, while the practically identical kinds of variants, kinds of variants, qualities of variants that occur between TR editions are trifling and unimportant, that there's nothing to see here. I have tried for years to figure out how King James defenders can continue to use Matthew 5.18, the jot and tittle promise, as a proof text for their view when there is no one Textus Receptus, but multiple TRs with different jots and tittles. I think it's safer to stick with the viewpoint of Erasmus and of the King James translators and of countless intelligent Christians of history, people who recognize that the minor variations among Greek New Testament manuscripts are just that, minor. I think we should be thankful for and confident in an excellently preserved New Testament, no matter which printed edition of the New Testament you prefer. Any one of the hundred or so TRs, fine. Any one of the several majority or Byzantine editions, fine. Any of the major critical texts, totally fine. You have a trustworthy copy of the New Testament, no matter what you choose, that will guide you into all truth. Dear brothers and sisters, do not divide from one another over minor variants in the Greek New Testament. I beg of you, take a hard look at page after page of these differences at my kjvparallelbible.org site. It's free for your use. I spent many hours on it. By all means, use it. See what all the fuss is about. But don't tell another Bible-believing evangelical Christian who believes all the same doctrines you do that he has a completely different Bible. The Quran is completely different from the Textus Receptus Greek New Testament. How to win friends and influence people is completely, drastically, radically different from the Textus Receptus Greek New Testament. But the critical text and the Textus Receptus are not two totally, radically, completely, colossally, fundamentally different texts. And stay tuned for a follow-up video next Ides of April, I don't know, when I try to picture for you in an accessible way how different the two texts of the New Testament actually are.